Hello and welcome. My name is Allison Bream and I'm the CEO and founder of Virtual Corporate Wellness. Today, I want to talk about how to set up your corporate wellness program. Chances are you might be wondering what to include. And of course, there are many ways to go about it and you need to determine what will ultimately be best for your company. I want to go ahead and give you some ideas on where to start. First, you need to do an evaluation. Look at what you're already currently doing from a benefits, perks, and corporate wellness standpoint. Look at any results from previous corporate wellness activities that you might have done in the past. You want to understand what were those results and how can you use that information to improve on what you're about to do now. The second tip is you want to ask yourself, what are your goals? I highly recommend setting up both short-term and long-term goals. For instance, a short-term goal could be something such as you want to have 60% of your employees participate in your corporate wellness program. On the flip side, a long-term goal could be that you want to reduce healthcare costs by 20% within the next 12 months, or even create a specific goal around a certain health issue like lowering high blood pressure costs or high health, high health cholesterol costs. The next step is you want to review your claims data. Find out the areas that are costing you the most money, then build a program around educating your employees on how to make the necessary changes. It's a win for your employees' health, and it's also a win for you. Another tip is to survey your employees. Create a list of corporate wellness programs that would benefit your company based on previous results you've done in the past, your goals, and the claims data that you just reviewed. And then survey your employees to understand their preferences. You can even take this a step further and ask what incentives might help them to increase their willingness to participate. Now that you have a quick idea on where to start for setting up your program, let's take this a step further and look at some of the five top corporate wellness categories that a lot of companies really focus on based on a workplace wellness study conducted by the RAND Corporation. Now this is a study where these are the top five categories in order based on employee preference. The first one is disease prevention. So this could be something you know, like you're, you're going to focus on heart disease or high blood pressure or high cholesterol, something specific around how to lower a specific illness or disease. The second category based on employee preference is medical self-care. Employees want to learn how to treat minor cuts and, and standard first aid and, you know, things like what to do on the onset of a potential cold. Basically, the net net is they want to understand how to treat at home and when they should take their family or, or child to or even themselves to the doctor. The third category based on employee preference is fitness. And this is this is not a shocker. This is where most corporate wellness programs really focus a lot of their attention. But this could be anything from a group walking challenge, including weights or fun fitness equipment in the office, or basically anything to get your employees up and moving. The fourth category based on employee preference is smoking cessation. According to WebMD News, it costs employers on average $6,000 per year for each employee that smokes. That annual cost stems from time off due to sickness, numerous smoking breaks leading to loss in productivity, and even doctor visits. So it's definitely something that's a benefit to the employee's health to learn how to quit smoking, but then from a cost perspective, it's something that costs most employers a lot more when you're comparing costs um, to non-smokers. The fifth most popular category is stress management. And I think that this is a really popular category for a lot of different reasons. You know, work is, is one of the number one causes of stress in the U.S. And employers are now spending more and more money on wellness programs, but it's really important to address stress management. I think it's really important because Today, you know, everything's so much uh, more competitive, fast changing, high technology. We're all just trying to kind of keep up 
with everything that's going on from a technology perspective and also to see how we can stay ahead of our competition. And there, with that becomes a lot of pressure and a lot of employees, it, it causes them increased stress, anxiety, and even depression. And nobody's immune. This happens at all levels of an organization. So it's really important to focus on stress management. And I believe that it's really important to address this in two ways. One is to look at what's going on within the company, within the organization. What are those unexpected, uh, you know, unspoken expectations that might be going on within the organization? Are people noticing that in order to get promoted, you have to work 60 hours a week or you know what what are those unspoken expectations what is and also what is the culture around meetings if if people are in meetings back to back to back to back they might not be able to get their work done until later on in the day so that you know increases the number of hours that they're working and the stress that piles up it's also taking time away you know from their life outside of work so it's important to kind of address What's going on within the organization that is causing so much stress? Are they, are, is the company not reaching their goals? Is there, there kind of hints of layoff? What is going on within the organization? Kind of get to that root cause and address that. On the flip side, you also want to educate your employees on how to set up proper boundaries for themselves. Um, also, management techniques so that when stress is high, you know, they can kind of put some of their techniques into action in order to help to reduce the stress themselves. It could be something, you know, like a exercise program, like they, they, you know, just tension and stress goes away when they go for a run or do yoga or meditation or whatever the case might be, but just helping them find ways to manage that stress. So those are the top five categories based, again, on the workplace study by the RAND Corporation. However, remember that all companies are unique. Your company is unique and you need to customize what works best for you and your employees. That's why reviewing your claims data and surveying your employees is so important. I can't stress that enough. Remember, corporate wellness is more than a fruit bowl or gym discount. If done right, a comprehensive corporate wellness strategy can help you lower your healthcare costs and increase profits. Remember, the goal is to help build a culture and strategy that helps you retain and recruit top talent, increase employee productivity, and become known as one of the best places to work. I hope these tips were useful on just how to set up your corporate wellness programming and kind of get the ball rolling. If you like these tips, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you want more information, um, I highly recommend checking out my checklist that covers my four key strategies to corporate wellness. All you have to do is go to virtualcorporatewellness.com backslash four keys. So thank you so much for joining me today. I know your time is valuable, so it means so much that you spend a few minutes of your day with me. I hope these tips helped, and I look forward to connecting with you soon. Take care.